Welcome to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. I'm your host, Ash Widener, and this is episode 32, How to Buy Cash Flowing Websites, with our guest, Trevor Caverco, founder of the WebsiteBuyer.com. This is such an interesting interview. The realization of buying websites as part of a portfolio is not yet mainstream knowledge. With information offered in this podcast, you will be way ahead of the curve and can potentially set yourself up with returns of 30% per year. No, that's not a joke. You might want to grab a pen and paper because there's a lot of knowledge nuggets from Trevor. Please follow us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes are found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com. I hope you enjoy the show. I've got a very special guest, Trevor Caverco. If you recall, Trevor was our guest in episode seven, and we discussed digital real estate and buying cash flowing websites as a source of passive income. This is our first guest to come back onto the show because so many of you reached out to me and you were so interested in the topic that we spoke about that I had to get Trevor back on the show. So Trevor, thank you so much for joining me. Ash, great to be back, my man. Um, I had a blast last time. I'm really thrilled that people got a lot out of it. I'm honored to be back. Man, I'm telling you, people loved what you're talking about. And, you know, let's just catch them up really quickly. Maybe some people, we have new listeners now that didn't listen to episode seven. Recap what we talked about last time about your interest in passive cash flowing websites and just what that means. I invest in websites and that might sound a little strange because when you say invest in tech companies, most people think startups and, and I do that as well. I've done that quite a bit in the past, but what I focus on today is specifically investing in profitable websites and I'm building a, a brand around this. I'm building an authority website and I'm also launching a private equity style fund that deploys capital in this new asset class that I'm really excited about. So cash flowing websites, this isn't your standard blog or is it, or is this something that is already, you know, producing revenue every single month that you basically buy the rights to and buy the domain and then it's producing revenue for you? Yeah, I would define a website as a lifestyle business, something that has very high operating margins, 90% plus that has very low overhead, uh, very small logistical day to day things to do. A lot of these things you can just run from your beth- your, your bedroom or your, your uh, beach house. It, it's a very simple business model. And yeah, blogs are a good example. Um, other membership sites, e-commerce sites, sometimes software products, uh, just any website, things you, you visit every day uh, could qualify as a website. And, and really the only thing I care about is, is this an ultra profitable business? Does it have a track record? And that's the main criteria for me. Right. And how do you start qualifying these? And can you give us an example of one or two of these types of websites that you're talking about? Well, we, <clears throat> uh, the last deal we did, I'll, I'll kind of uh, update a little case study. Uh, it was a software business. So it sold software uh, that helped people do competitive research on Google keywords. Um, so you download the software, you pay a monthly fee to get access to the software. And I would consider this a website, even though you could classify it as a startup. It wasn't really any crazy disruptive technology. It was just a really solid fundamental business that had value that people were willing to pay for. Uh, so this particular deal, uh, without getting too specific into the details, uh, it was a seven figure business uh, and we uh, coordinated a syndicate. So we, we got a bunch of co-investors together and then we made an offer for the site. And since, since we bought it, it's been awesome. There's a case study I can send you, uh, kind of a report that we did since the acquisition three months ago. And it's just been great. We've, we've grown the, the revenue substantial 
and and it's really motivated us to start building out a framework so we can do these deals more often. Yeah, there's so many awesome services and websites out there that are just a couple bucks a month that you can subscribe to. One that I subscribe to is schedulewonce.com. I have a scheduling link now that people can come and very easily schedule stuff with me. And I pay them $5 a month. Well, for me, $5 is, is nothing, right? Especially for the convenience that I get for having a, a website keep up with my schedule for me. But just imagine if you had, you know, a thousand or two or 10,000 people paying you $5 a month. Now you're talking about some serious revenue. It's, it's very interesting that, you know, you guys are looking at different niches and you're not tied to one specific niche necessarily. You're just looking at the business itself, how, how viable it is and what type of cash flow that you can get out of it. Exactly. We, to give you another example, a deal we actually lost out on was a men's hairstyle block. So I know that's something you're passionate about, Ash. And, yeah, uh, it, it, less and less passionate every day. <laughs> <laughs> and and we we looked at this thing. We're like, are you kidding me? This guy's making, I can't say the official number, but I'm like, holy crap. So th this uh, this website was absolutely crushing it in advertising. And one of the cool things about these deals is not only are they fundamentally good deals, like we don't even look at deals less than 30% ROI. That's the minimum. Mm -hmm. If it's 28% ROI, we don't even bother doing due diligence on it. So that's the starting point. And even if we buy this thing and don't grow it, we just sit on it and it kind of maintains a stable trajectory. It's a great investment, 30% in today's world. You know, this is cash on cash returns. So it's a 30% oh, yeah, dividend. And that's assuming we don't, we don't grow these websites. And what we're starting to learn is that a lot of the founders of these companies haven't necessarily optimized the business. They're not mm. professional operators. You know, these are guys who sometimes stumbled on a lifestyle business that just kind of took off. And now we come in and we hire professional SEO people, professional content writers, professional, you know, legal accounting, engineering people. And we've got this world class team that can take a business and two to three X the revenue after we buy it. So we're, we're getting these uh, phenomenal. Uh, you know, one year payback so far on some of the deals we've been doing. And that's kind of why I decided to start evangelizing it to other people. Yes, yeah, very entrepreneurial of you to be able to recognize that even though you've got one SEO uh, type of keyword Google website that you that you were successful in purchasing, but then you have a, a men's hair blog or something that seems to be completely different in scope, completely different sectors, but the systems that run behind them, because they're both websites, are going to be very similar. They both need to have their SEO looked at. They both need to have marketing, you know, marketing to different people, but they both need marketing. You need to look at the infrastructure of the website. And for you as the entrepreneur, you can build this team of people that are familiar with each individual part of what makes a website successful. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the one website itself you know you built a a process here that you can apply to all of these websites to increase their value over time exactly i remember last time we were talking about standard operating procedures and you know i think you were really getting into understanding and appreciating standard operating procedures how have you seen your standard operating procedures change between last november and now they're still a work in progress as all operating procedures are um, just to clarify, we're just talking about uh, different frameworks and day-to-day -day rules that we follow as a business, um, especially when we do something repeatable like buying websites, there's certain steps involved. For websites, for example, there's five steps, and this right. is not exclusive to, to websites, but for us, we've customized these five individual steps, and we've brought all of these um, steps in-house. So the first thing you do in any deal and websites included is you source the website. So you, you lead generate the, the product that you're going to buy in this case, a website. So that's step one. Uh, we have awesome lead gen right now. We have access to the best brokers. We have a really good deep network of buyers and sellers and marketplaces and auction houses houses. So we're fortunate enough to see a lot of the best deals first before anybody else does. It's called getting on a pre-marketing list and, um, that's number one. So find the best deals. And that's arguably the most important thing is, is making sure you see the, the best deals first before the bidding wars start happening. Um, 
Number two is doing due diligence on the best leads that come in. And this is also a very, very crucial step. Um, I would say the vast majority of the deals that we look at, we pass on because they don't, they don't go through due diligence. And this, this is its own kind of podcast in and of itself, how to do due diligence properly. Again, it's not specific to websites. Any, if you buy a McDonald's, you got to do due diligence on it. Uh, but in our case, there's very specific steps on how to verify traffic, on how to make sure the this, this seller isn't sketchy and has legitimate links to the website and so on. Step three is making an offer and negotiating the deal. So you like the due diligence after you source the deal and now you make, make an offer. And this is really our secret sauce uh, from my vantage point. And what I enjoy doing the most is actually putting together an offer for the seller. And you can't get too aggressive. If you try to you know, stack the cards too much, they just say no and then a really good deal could pass you by. But the good thing about this industry is that, in my estimation, it's still a buyer's market. There's not a lot of liquidity for sellers. They don't have a lot of places to go to if they're looking to get liquidity. So we kind of come in. We're one of the few uh, groups that can wave a seven-figure check in front of them. And because of that, we have a lot of leverage during our negotiations. And we can negotiate things like seller financing clauses, like holdback clauses, which just means we give a portion of the price in, in the form of a down payment, but we hold back kind of a big chunk of it as well, sometimes up to 50% in consideration. And they don't get that capital until the site hits certain metrics and that, you know, the traffic doesn't tank. And that's right. another way to protect us. Because really the name right. of this game is mitigating risk and making a good offer is the best way to mitigate risk. And, and, that, and that's step three. So negotiating with the seller and, and making an offer. Step four is transitioning the assets from the previous owner to us. Uh, the cool thing about these deals are they are asset purchase sales. They're not equity deals. So we're not buying the liabilities. We're not buying uh, the, the structure itself. When I sold my tech company, it was a share purchase agreement, an SPA. When I buy when I sell a website, it's an asset purchase agreement, an APA, and these are really great. And, and you should really look into these if, if you're in this business because you don't have to worry about any of the crap the business has. You just buy the website, the domain, the customers. And in addition to that, it's really easy to reincorporate those assets into a new jurisdiction. And one of the things that we like to do is take assets in a high tax jurisdiction and reincorporate them into a low tax jurisdiction. And the beauty of it is these are all, you know, online businesses that don't have a lot of operations on the ground. So it's really easy to go offshore. The last thing I'll say, Ash, just before you jump on is, is the last step in the process, which is growth. And that is uh, probably the funnest thing uh, to do is to take, you know, the hairstyle deal that I was telling you about. This is what we do. We say, OK, this is getting a lot of traffic and we're monetizing it through advertising, but how else can we grow this business? What other revenue streams are there? So one of the things we talked about doing was uh, selling hair products and driving traffic to, to uh, other people's hair products. And now not only are we getting the, the display advertising revenue, but we can actually get a margin on selling physical products as well or selling other people's products. So growing these deals turns good deals into great deals and it's something we're getting better at every day. Yeah, exactly. And it's really neat because you don't have to see if there's demand for this out there because you're buying a cash flowing website. So you already know that there's demand. It's just how much more demand can you bring out of it? You know, as an entrepreneur, the growth phase, your number five is how can you with your experience in either this sector, like hair product sector, I mean, you have amazing hair. <laughs> but the, the, the hair product sector or whatever the sector, you know, apply your knowledge or just your fundamental knowledge of what a website needs to be successful. Speaking of websites, Trevor, I know that you recently launched your own website. I believe it's the website buyer.com. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? So here I was doing a lot of deals and having a ton of fun. I love pitching this stuff because it's, it's uh, such a no brainer as an investment for me. And I was getting really good feedback and people were like, where do I go to learn more? How do I get involved? And there, there really weren't a lot of good resources out there. And I selfishly wanted more people to get involved in this industry because it gave me more partners to do deals with, more capital to raise. 
So I decided to launch an authority website called the WebsiteBuyer.com, and this is uh, where I distribute educational resources. I do uh, coaching programs, and I'm just really trying to get people to rally around this asset class. Um, I just saw a major void in the marketplace, so I decided to step up and fill it. And so this is an authority website rather than a marketplace to buy and sell websites. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. This is just a way I'm going to add a forum for discussions. I have a private buyer's club you can apply to to get some of the, the deals uh, that I see to, to come across your desk as well. I also sell some products, some uh, courses and guides on how to get started. So I see on your homepage it says, you know, find out why I flipped the bird to mainstream investments and dove headfirst into the world of digital cash flow. What are mainstream investments, Trevor, and why do you apparently not like them very much? My track record of investing, aside from websites, is not a good one. I, uh, if you're looking to co-invest with me based on my track record, you might think twice because I tried everything. I invested in stocks like mainstream mutual funds and, and all that stuff and got wiped out in 2008 i had gold stocks and oil stocks more recently and then those Oof. you know bloodbath you and me too yeah so okay not maybe stocks aren't my thing uh real estate same thing i had some u.s interests prior to 2008 and that as we all know did not end very well um i also you know dabbled in some option stuff and bonds and and I'm like, okay, this is not this is not working out. I'm like going broke here. So then, uh, you know, I, I focused my attention on entrepreneurship uh, and had some capital from the sale of one of my businesses. And I said, okay, I'm not going to go back into Wall Street, but maybe I can do what I know, and that's startups. So I started investing as an angel and doing some strategic investments and had a lot of fun doing that. But same thing, it's uh, that's even riskier than than stocks. You're investing in ideas and people and, and you never really know how that's going to end up. The payback cycles are decades long in some cases. So I'm like, okay, I don't think startups are, are going to be my salvation. Like what, what's today. left? What do we've got left here, right? So I'm like, maybe maybe it's time to kind of uh, put up the white flag and, and start some more companies. But just prior to that, I, I discovered um, a mastermind in Vegas that a, a friend of mine invited me to. It was kind of like an angel investor conference. Uh, I actually, I write about this on my, on my blog uh, that your readers can check out, this whole story of how this mastermind in Vegas kind of unveiled this secret asset class for me. And then I, I saw these people investing in websites that were absolutely crushing it, that were making like $300,000 a year, you know, $30,000 a month US, uh, investing in like, blogs and investing in all these other lifestyle businesses. So that was kind of me getting started on this journey. I was like, okay, I got to learn more about this. And the first thing I did was make an offer on a website. I called the seller and I asked him, okay, this is a cool product. What's the price to earnings ratio? Let's, let's make a deal. And he said, it's 18, 18 X. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, okay. That's kind of what stocks, trade at historically, uh, that's cool. And he goes, no, 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 not 18x annual earnings, 18 times monthly earnings wow. is the website. Big, big difference there. And I'm like, is this guy for real? That's that's a 50% ROI, like off the top of my head. This is a one and a half year payback. This is unheard of, this is clearly a scam. And, and kind of the more I looked into it, I'm like, no, this is just the reality of this marketplace. It's so, under the radar that the big money hasn't come in yet to bid up the prices and bid, bid up the, the multiples. So that was, that was kind of what got me hooked from the beginning and, and I haven't looked back since. So you've got the very interesting ROIs. You've also got the digital nomad possibility where, like you said earlier, in the um, fourth stage of you buying a website, the transitioning the assets from the previous owner to the new owner, since you don't have a factory or you don't have people working in an office, you can re-domicile these really wherever you want, be them in Vegas, be them in Delaware, or be them in Panama or wherever you want to domicile some of this stuff. And it really gives you the freedom 
to have these cash flowing websites and travel the world if you would like. Like you said, you could do it in your home office or in your beach house, or I'm sure in a coffee shop if you can get, uh, you know, stable internet. Yeah, exactly. And just, just to recap those steps, because I know I kind of went off on a tangent. There's lead gen, finding the deal, doing a deep dive, due diligence, step two. Step three is making an offer and negotiating the deal. Step four is transitioning from them to you. And step five is growth. And just like you said, not it's not just the fact that these are are digital companies. Like people don't understand that. It's a business is a business. If it's generating revenue, you don't need inventory. You don't need fixed costs. You don't need real estate. You don't need an office. And I've gone from being skeptical of this whole marketplace to I don't, I don't even look at physical products anymore. It's just there's too many bottlenecks. Seems like a headache. It's terrible. I, you know, I own a Bitcoin machine and I'm like, this is, this sucks. Like it breaks down, you have to ship it, you have to like upkeep it. I'm like, I'd rather just sell eBooks all day. That's the margins there are. And the ROI isn't going to be near as, near as good as, you know, uh, cash flowing websites. Exactly. And, and yeah, just like you said, between the tax efficiency status, that's a big thing for me. The, the remote workforce, um, the fact that these are potentially passive deals, if you know uh, how to structure operators and you know how to uh, transition to a new ownership, uh, an operation group. And train and hire virtual assistants to start doing some of your content or keeping up with your statistics or man, yeah, I mean, you can, you can put everything in the cloud, I guess, if you, if you will. Yeah, what I've noticed, there's, there's kind of three types of people that are coming to my website and that invest in websites in general. There's people who want to do it, so they want to learn everything. That was kind of me when I got started. You want to learn all the technical things. You want to learn how to analyze Google Analytics, and you want to know how to evaluate websites. So that's one group. Uh, the second group is people who want help. So they want, to, they want to get taught how to do it. They want to get their hand held. And the third group, which I'm finding might be the biggest and most lucrative opportunity is people who want you to do it for them. People who have no interest in learning this stuff, they just, they like the concept, they like the, the team involved, and they just want to invest. And they want to do kind of a Wall Street type investment on the deal. Yeah, so I remember back in episode seven, Trevor, you were telling me about your idea of forming some type of financial instrument to help people start investing the, the people that you know don't have the time or really the interest but they've got you know some cash sitting there and they don't want to invest in the stock market or real estate physical real estate have you made any more progress on uh, website cash flowing fund no nothing uh, uh, official to announce yet but yes we have made considerable headway um, we, we've learned a lot about the marketplace and the, and the one thing we've kind of concluded is that there is a lot of pent up demand for a product like this. There is a lot of investor appetite from a retail perspective, but also from an institutional uh, level of, of interested parties involved in these deals. And I think the reason is there's, there's a very interesting hybrid with what we're doing between tech, which is you know lots of upside, sexy, uh, lots of potential, and fundamental value investing that a lot of Wall Street analysts look for. And this is one of the few products that combines both, because if you look at startups, they're innovative, they're, they're tech plays, but you're never gonna get good valuations, not only because uh, the market's going crazy right now, but because like they don't make money. So how can you, right. you know, value it based on cash flow if they're not profitable? Whereas traditional businesses that produce yield like bonds and real estate in some cases and dividends with some stocks, that's fine. But like, you're going to, you're not going to do that great. I mean, with, in, yeah. after inflation, you're going to make a couple points a year and you know, good luck. You're going to have to live to 150 if you want to see a meaningful, you know, return return. Exactly. And that, that's why I think people are really, uh, receptive to the concept of a, a fund because, we do the work. We've got all the operational experience in house. We know all the tricks. We know how to negotiate these deals. We know how to do the five steps. And to do it at scale, we'll eventually need to bring in uh, outside capital. And that's that's what we're in the process of doing. Yeah, you've got the team together. You have the talent. You have the processes and the knowledge and the ability 
you're you just need the capital to continue to make this business model work it's already a proven business model just the more capital that you have at your expense the more the more profit you can earn and of course that would go back to the fund holders as well i think it's a you know i think it's a wonderful idea trevor i've i've looked into some of uh, like flippa.com and different marketplaces for websites just because i'm really curious i'm a i'm a tech type of guy you know i do like to get my hands dirty i love looking over statistics write my own spreadsheets to chart automatically chart where my updates are where my traffic's coming from but even i would be interested in getting into a fund like this because look there's only so much time in the day and you can't become an expert on everything. And this looks like an incredible opportunity. So just like you hire a real estate agent to help you find a house, why wouldn't you hire a digital real estate agent to help find a, a really solid cash flowing website and manage that for you? Yeah, I've got you know very similar people echoing the same kind of things based on the content I've released so far. <laughs> I got a lot of friends, a lot of buddies just being like, oh, I've got 10 grand, you know, sitting around. Maybe I don't know what to do with it. I'm kind of like you. Mm -hmm. Like, do I invest in real estate at all time highs here in Canada right. where I'm from? Do I invest in stocks at all time? Like, I don't know. And, and this is a really good alternative. So I'm trying to figure out a way uh, to give them an opportunity to co-invest. It's not easy and there's a lot of headaches involved in launching something like this. And I'm still partial to people who want to learn how to do it themselves. And I always have time, you know, coaching and mentoring people who uh, who want to build their own, you know, ten thousand a month, hundred thousand dollar a month portfolio of, of passive income. But um, I think, you know, just just for a quick history, it started out with just me. I was buying sites individually, and then the next logical step was to partner with somebody. So I brought on a partner, an ex Goldman Sachs guy, and we started buying deals together. And then we're like, okay, let's what's next? And we started a syndicate, which is just you know nine or ten guys co-investing on deals together. They do, they have similar structures in real estate as well. And what's next is a fund, some kind of structure, maybe even a public facing vehicle that we can mm -hmm. give traditional investors access to. So where do you see this sector evolving in the next five or 10 years? It's still a drop in the bucket. And that's kind of what I like about it because we can kind of be big fish in a small pond. And there's, there's financial benefits of that as well because we can move markets. We can come into a vertical and do a roll up, so to speak, where we acquire a lot of similar businesses and then synergize them, drive traffic to each other's sites and squeeze out some of the competitors. So that's something uh, that we're looking into as well as we raise you know, some meaningful capital. I mean, if we we're looking to raise uh, an eight figure, a multi eight figure fund, and that's like that's like like half of the friggin' entire market. So, right. so uh, we're, we're obviously gonna have to look into bigger tech deals outside these little, you know, website blogs. But uh, like I said before, one of the benefits of this industry, there's a lot of inventory out there. There's a lot of deals. Uh, the brokers have are just flooded with with dozens of new deals every day. And we want to take advantage of that. So for people just getting started, and I'm probably asking this just for myself, but for people like me who are really interested in this, they're a bit tech savvy, they can go to flippa.com. Well, I'll add the links in the show notes. What are some things that you, looking back on it, you wish that you'd have known back then whenever you were doing this by yourself? Just quickly, I don't think I answered your last question fully. I, the way I see the industry going real quick is multiples going up there's more buyers coming in so I, i'm not trying to create artificial urgency here but every last year the average multiple went from two times trailing earnings to three times it trailing earnings it went up one full percentage point in 12 months that's absolutely crazy uh, and that's a 50 percent increase <laughs> yeah i was trying to <laughs> that's that's insane so that that's in a nutshell where i see the market going uh to answer your question about getting started um I think the first thing is to, to figure out what type of investor are you? Are you a passive investor? Or are you an active investor? One of the big sell points that I like to tell people about websites is that you're in control. I don't like right. investing in products that I can't call up the guy in charge on his cell phone when there's a problem. My stock portfolio, I could not do that. My, right. my uh, 
uh, startup portfolio, even that was sometimes difficult to get the guy on the phone. But it, but with websites, you're in charge. You're the guy making the decisions, and and that's why I kind of think the first step is figuring out what type of investor are you. Are you the guy who wants to be in control? Are you the guy who wants to put his faith in other people who are more experienced than you, and then do due diligence on your own from the outside? If you're the guy who likes getting his hands dirty, then there's lots of great resources out there. I have some stuff. Uh, other guys like Jeff Hunt at heckyad.org. Uh, Eric Roberts at The Intervestor is another guy that I've done some some business with and and just kind of brush up a lot of the stuff is really uh, simple you know doing traffic analytics is not difficult but just brush up on that stuff and start looking you know what's the domain authority of different blog sites and hey guess what maybe this guy isn't valuing evaluating his traffic high enough and then a guy like you can come in buy the site that has a lot of traffic but not a lot of revenue and monetize it that's another kind of strategy if you have a low budget it's just is finding sites not making money because they don't know how to monetize traffic but if you're smart and you've been around this industry you know that traffic is money it's just right. it's currency it's just uh as long as you can as long as you can realize that value and and it's not just currency it's a multiplier sometimes the traffic can be worth more than just straight up revenue because there's other ways to to upsell people and different funnels to put them in. I'd highly recommend uh, people that are interested in getting into this start brushing up on their digital marketing. Know what a marketing funnel is. Know how to upsell. Know how to downsell. Know how to uh, split test. Know know how to analyze data. This is the future language of of business. It's, it's, this is not just like a, a little niche of geeky internet people. Everybody are, is using these techniques now. All the big Fortune 500 companies, um, you know, if, if I had kids, I'd probably get them uh, in that space, learning about uh, digital marketing. That'd be, that's the biggest growth area I see coming in the next 10 to 15 years. Mm, right, and if someone doesn't want to get their feet wet in this, do you offer mentorship or counseling or tutoring or, or whatever you call it, or will they may be able to buy into your fun at some point soon? Yeah, and that's the unfortunate thing is there's really nothing easy available. When I got started, I didn't want to be the guy. I wanted to go partner with smarter people than me, but it's sure. it's very difficult. We're you know when I say we make offers for businesses and we structure them, there's no blueprint on how to do this. This is not this is something where we've been in, uh, innovating on and iterating on as as we've gone through. Like for example, the last deal we bought, we had to create an asset holding company offshore and then we created a operations company onshore and this is kind of an unusual setup but for this particular instance it made a lot of sense and it's paying dividends right now uh, so what I offer through my authority site is materials to kind of help connect you with other people you can email me directly at trevor at the website buyer.com to set something up if you have any questions but I have different products and different emails that you get in the coming days if you sign up that will offer you different services to get started. Awesome, Trevor. Is there anything else you'd like to hit on before we close out the show? Um, I just, you know, I'm doing, this is not what I originally, this is not where I saw myself five years ago, kind of uh, promoting uh, an investment product. I, I just genuinely think this is the best kept secret out there. And I've done well personally by doing this and I'd love for more people to get involved. It's a shame that I don't have other mentors to model my fund off of. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd love people to get involved, whether you kind of go through my funnel or not, just like learn about Flippa, learn about all these other brokerages. I can give you personal introductions to some of the top brokers if you want to get on those same pre-marketing lists that I get on. Uh, but just, just check it out. I, I'm kind of doing this as my personal mission right now to get the word out there. Yeah, I think it's terrific. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about the entrepreneurial aspect of what you're doing, but we are Liberty Entrepreneurs. So if you could, while we wrap up here, give me an idea how this has created more freedom in your own life and how you can see this creating more freedom and control in other people's lives if they become successful website owners. That's a really good question. And that's that's one of the reasons I like this show so much is because it does tie those freedom oriented convictions that we all have into, into the message. And I think a, a couple things I'll say on that topic are you got to get into this for the right reason. If, if you're, if you're looking to, you know, just 
you know, I have buddies who have online businesses and they just kind of go from one Airbnb in a city for a month and then they go to another Airbnb for February and then they just kind of hop around. That's awesome. And I, I have nothing against that. Uh, you know, that's not kind of my style. I just have severe ADD. So I'm always working on new things. But I will say, like, whether it's website investing or anything else, make sure you get into whatever you're working on for the right reasons. And my philosophy has just been to add value, um, whether I get paid for it, whether I don't. If, if you add value for other people in their lives, then good things tend to happen to you as well. So if you're looking to get into the website game, just think about, you know, where do you fit into the value creation continuum? Are you helping an entrepreneur get liquidity for his business? Are you growing these websites? Um, if you're just doing it to kind of, you know, get a few grand a month in extra passive income and kind of sit on the sidelines, then maybe it's not the best platform for you to do that. Yeah, it's amazing that entrepreneurs provide freedom not only for themselves, but for other people through the additional value that they create in the marketplace, be it a, a website that helps you better understand how to rank higher on Google or a hair product that makes you feel more confident about yourself or, or, or whatever. It's the entrepreneur provides freedom through value creation. It's a, it's a really beautiful synergy. That's what this show is all about. Trevor, you're definitely a Liberty entrepreneur. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for coming on to the show and uh, let's, let's keep up. I'd love to come back again. Thanks, Ash. You're, you do good work. Thanks, Trevor. Keep building freedom. Thanks again for listening to another episode of Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. Trevor really knows what he's talking about, doesn't he? I bet you're really excited to learn more about how you can buy cash flow and websites as part of your investment portfolio. There's just something about cash flow that can provide more freedom in someone's life. Feel free to reach out to Trevor at thewebsitebuyer.com, subscribe to his information, and if you speak to him, tell him that you heard him on the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. Thanks again for listening. Please rate us and subscribe to us. We're a small but growing podcast, and every subscription and rating really helps. Join our Facebook page at facebook.com slash libertyentrepreneurs, and let us know what you thought of the show. Hope to see you again soon. Until then... Keep building freedom.